I want to grow my own shit. Is the DC farmer, the DC farmer, the DC farmer. DC farmer show. Is the DC farmer, the DC farmer, the DC farmer. Chai! Used to get my peace from AZ. Mary Jane is the case that they gave me. Trips from the West Coast stop real fast. DC farmer show the masses how to grow grass. No till the method be attentive, slow learner. The raw sheets turn that gas to a slow burner. Big worm got the strains in variety. Jeff Sessions trying to fuck up the society. Cannabis community, rise up, eyes up. Fight for your right to light or eyes shut. Loud from the motherland. I'm getting high in stadium. Super gas, no clone, it grown with vibranium. Try coke chasers, cancel up the grow up. Self sufficiency, that's how we need our smokers. Alien dream turn girl scouts into soldiers. Smoking doja. Contact if you come closer. Every Monday, 10 to 11 p.m. Focus on that grow, watch the show with your BM. Comedy bud, interviews, real lit. The DC Fama show, educate real shit. The DC Fama, the DC Fama, the DC Fama, the DC Fama show. Is the DC Fama, the DC Fama, the DC Fama show. Is the DC Fama, the DC Fama, the DC Fama show. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of the DC Farmer Show. Got my co-host Big Worm. How's it going, man? Man, it's been going all right. Actually, I've been on the road all day today, man. What you been doing? I've been traveling out Pennsylvania, meeting some people, man. Um, lovely out there. A um, lot of beautiful farmland out there. I was all the way out in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, for whoever knows where that may be. You know right. what I'm saying? To me, that was like bumfuck Pennsylvania, but... Yeah, a lot of farmland out there, you know, people trying to do some things and giving pointers, taking pointers, you know. But uh, great. I, I, I just want to say I love this community, man, because, you know, the way people reach out to you, you reach out to people, and it's just all love, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never really been out there, man. They actually, man, you know what I'm saying? So it's definitely all love. Like I said, been on the road all day. Um. So yeah, and another thing, man, mind yourself when you're going past them booths, them uh, them tow booths. So uh, I skipped one, right? <laughs> I ain't know, man, because it was like easy tow lane, tickets, no tickets, and easy tow lanes only, right? So right. I'm like, well, I ain't got no ticket. I ain't got no easy tow lane. So I went through the no ticket line, right? Nobody there, nothing there. So I'm like, okay. So I just kept it moving, right? So the thing is, I, I was going into the Turnpike, the New Jersey Turnpike, right. or what the Pennsylvania Pennsylvania, Pen, bike, right. the Pennsylvania Turnpike. So uh, when I got into it, you got to get out of it. <laughs> I wasn't hit. <laughs> so when I got to the other end, they was like, "Where's your ticket?" You had to pay the whole thing. So I said, "What ticket?" You know what I'm saying? He was like, "You're supposed to get the ticket at the other." I said, "What? Nobody at the booth." I said, didn't nobody tell me anything about any ticket, right? So he was like, yeah, now you got to pay thirty two fifty or something like that. I'm like, what? The whole thing. I said, hold up. I said, how much would I have to pay if I would have had a ticket? He said, $3. I said, nah, man. <laughs> I felt robbed. I, I was pissed, man. I was like, man, but still, once I, got, once I finally got to the destination, man, all that was, you know, I forgot all about all that, man. So <laughs> it's crazy, man. Definitely crazy, man. Just... Like you said, when you travel, I don't travel much, y'all. But so when you're traveling, man, mind yourself, man, on these tow booths. Because they will crack your head wide open. No doubt. Yeah, how about yourself? Because you do a lot of traveling yourself anyway. Yeah, I was a trucker for a while, man. So I've, I got the signs down at this point. <laughs> uh, 
No, this week's been good, man. We harvested a CBD plant today. Uh, got that hanging. Uh, put the new Platinum Girl Scout cookies. Happy to report not overgrown. Uh, oh, so you got a tame down this yeah, time, Yeah, it's huh? got about 16 heads on each of them. Um, now, how long did you let it flower? Uh, this one, the the CBD went right at about eight weeks. Eight weeks? Yeah. No, I mean, I actually meant to say how long you let it veg. Oh, the new one? Uh, they've been in there, what, three weeks now? Three weeks, and that's yeah. how you, you, caught it, you caught it a little earlier? Yeah, so they're going to, I'm going to do a double scrog, probably see what they do. Okay. Cool. But that should be good. The other platinum is finishing up. Um, I think I'm going to order some ceramic metal highlights, some 315 to replace the, uh, the HPS light in there. So uh, how do you feel about, um, I don't know, eventually turning in, I mean, or... Switching over the lead. Um, I mean, I got the two. Um, especially, especially the summer's coming up. Yeah, That's so, why I, I so I'm it. definitely ready to switch to the nighttime veg. Um, excuse me, the nighttime flower again. Mm -hmm. You know, run the run the uh, lights at night. Um, I got the two Spectrum Kings in there, so I'm gonna switch out the HPS first. Um, I'm really, really hoping that with this extra distance on the Platinum Girl Scout cookies, that I am not gonna see any type of weird yellowing. From this light, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be over five feet away, so it should have plenty of... So you believe that the yellow and can You think that the intensity of the light was just too much and it's too close to be, the plant? Or, yeah, or it's But you know they draw a lot of heat. It's definitely sure. causing some issues. I don't know if it's heat or just intensity or what's going on, but it's way more prominent um, the closer it is to the light. I've seen it at different stages uh, with this light. So um, I'm trying to get the, light, the room dialed in. Going to get the air conditioner for it. Um, go 100% sealed, run the CO2. So, right, right. Yeah, and that's like me. I'm, I'm still in the designing phase. So, I'm trying to figure out exactly, you know, um, what my finish part is going to look like as far as the AC, the airflow, whether I'm going to use CO2 or not. Because I'm, I'm not really a, I, I don't even know how to use CO2. I'm not really a big CO2 guy because I, I like using the, um, you know, the air, the air that comes in and then exhaust the air out and all that. So, um, but it's harder than, it's, it's a lot harder than control your environment that way. Now, there's no, uh, no, with the mini split, there's no air exchange, right? Is that correct or incorrect? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I couldn't tell you, man. I don't, I don't know if that brings a, yeah, yeah so it's sealed, sealed right? Yeah. A lot of people that do yes. use it does it sealed yeah. room. I would be new to the, uh, split. Like I said, I, I usually do, a, um, Intake, outtake run with a decent AC and humidifier and all that. But now, the reason why I'm doing it this way now is because I actually kind of ended up building what I would say is an oven to come. You see what I'm saying? So, like, I've been noticing the more and more I work in my greenhouse, the hotter it is. It could be cold. It could be 30 degrees out there right now. It's going to be 60 in there without me doing anything. You built a uh, well as long as that sun, <laughs> Yeah, as long as that sun is shining through that roof, it that the, the temperature change is drastic and that's without me doing anything to the room i haven't like i said i haven't connected the exhaust i haven't done everything is just sealed right now it's just an oven like i said literally an oven so you know i, I have to go with the split the split um ac right. i definitely have to do that and i might have to um account for more power than was actually needed you know what i'm saying because uh our weather out here is crazy man it's super, super crazy. You don't never know what you're going to get. So it's better to be safe than sorry, especially at this stage in the game while you're building. You know right. what I'm saying? So that's why, that, you know, that's where I'm at now. And uh, what's going on to everybody out there in the chat? Don't for, don't think I forget forgot y'all or anything. The giveaway is still happening today. Um, I forgot to mention it, so apologize for that. And the giveaway will be this microscope, y'all. A digital microscope. To one lucky caller, uh, like I said, um, every every gardener could use this. Every gardener, no matter the type of gardening that you're doing or whatever, uh, microscope is essential to gardening if you're growing this cannabis, because uh, it'll help you, you know, spot and prevent any pests or disease. You know what I'm saying? Like you keep your eyes open. Right, right. The eye, you gotta keep your eyes keep open. Keep your eye on your plant. Something look funny. You want an up close and personal view? Here you go. Hook it up to the laptop. You are good to go. And I think uh, with this one, you know, with the compost tea, you could see some stuff. This goes to 220. Technically, you want a 440, but you definitely gonna see some stuff moving around at a 220. 
Um, you're not going to get as close, but if you got you a, a little slide or whatever, you could have some fun with this for sure. You could, you would definitely see some stuff moving around. It'd be fun, especially would, some of the bigger um, nematodes, I would think. And I was, and I also would suggest if you got a garden going right now at the moment, um, go ahead, man, get you a tele, what's it, uh, what they call a microscope. Get you a microscope, man. You know what I'm saying? I, just, if anything, out of curiosity, just to see what you got going on. Get you a microscope, take notes. It helps. I'm telling you, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Be more more um, interactive with your with your plants. Um, hey, what's going on, Monster? Monster OG. Uh, and for all y'all that don't know or don't follow Tricone Chases TV, make sure y'all go um, subscribe to them on YouTube. They have a dope live stream every Saturday. Uh, sometimes I'm part of it. Lately, I've been hella busy trying to keep up with everything. So I apologize for not being on the panel, but I always try to catch the show every Saturday when I can. And um, like I said, good to see you, Monster, because I ain't been seeing you around. I know you've been doing that work, putting in that work. Check out tree, is it Treetop Genetics. I know I'm saying it messed up or anything, but make sure y'all check him out because he's been putting in work creating these genetics, man. So I know he got some fire coming out for sure. Um, what's going on, J-Rock? And um, Go ahead and put the number up there. 202 Oh, uh, look, they, they done beat me to the punch. 202-618-9399. I'm going to go ahead and pass the phone over to my man Stoner. He going to take your call. Hey, what's the number going to be for the day, Big Worm? Number five. Number five? That's going to be quick and easy right there. Number five today, Stone. You ain't got to hold the phone long. So uh, if y'all want, go ahead and call in. I did have, I also want to mention that I have the guests that come in today, Infuse. I was really eager to talk to those guys. They actually came to the studio. Um, he had a family emergency come up, so they had to go. You know, nothing stands in front of family. So I appreciate them even coming to the studio, being, um, wanting to be um, a part of what I got going on and also a guest. Maybe we could schedule for next time or whatever the case may be, but I hope your family's fine. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. We could always schedule this another time. And like I said, Infuse, y'all go follow them on Instagram, Infuse, man. They do they do the lean. Y'all know I do the lean and all that, but these dudes do the lean. Their presentation is off the hook. They do edibles, and I'm pretty sure they do a whole lot more. But these are some guys that, um, that you really need to check out, and if you ever get a chance... To bump him at a bump into him at a pop up, or uh, just bump into him period and get um any of their products, man. Do please do. You will enjoy yourself. And um, you know, and with that being said, you know, when one, when one one wall falls down, another one call, comes up, and um, a man DC Scrogger came through the studio today, so we might have him on today for him to talk about his adventures going on because he's been doing it up, hitting up all the smoke scenes, all the um, cups, the events. So he's definitely going to let you know what's going on. And um, he's definitely, if anything, I've been peeping. Uh, Scrogger been job genetically hunting on the side, man, quiet as cat. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he got some fire to talk about, man. So. We got all that going to happen tonight um, as soon as we get a winner for the night. And after that, we're going to have them come in. But in the meantime, in between time, anybody out there in the chat got any questions for me and Big Worm, go ahead and feel free to ask. Um, I want to continue on the topic we was talking last week, if you don't mind, about teas and, you know, sure. what's so, what's whatever, you know, whatever. <clears throat> you know, so I was, I was thinking a little bit, you know, maybe we weren't really clear. You know, the only real tea... That we're brewing something or trying to create something is that compost tea where we're putting the compost in. Mm -hmm. The botanical tea, we're we're just dissolving, you know, we're mixing, we're infusing the water, we're giving it time to infuse, just like we're making tea we're gonna drink. Right, right. We're not brewing anything in our sweet tea. And the same thing with the seed sprout tea, you're just really mixing the so water. It's more up. like um, with those other um, teas that you're talking about, it's more like like you said, just um like the alfalfa or the kelp and stuff. <coughs> And literally what you're doing is actually soaking whatever material it is right. you're in there. Like you would literally do a tea bag in your tea. Just letting it soak and letting all that um, microbial life leak out into the um, water. We got a winner. have to cut J-Rock off. We got a winner again, y'all. All right, y'all. We got a winner. And it looked like it's J-Rock again, y'all. 
J Rock done won again. <laughs> Congratulations, J Rock. <laughs> the fix might be in. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't y'all, cause he from North Carolina, so where we all we out here in the city. Mm. So he he he's just getting lucky, man. Oh, right, well, there you go. You got a question? What was that? RF three. You like rapper rooters or rock wool? Mm. Me personally, I like rapper rooters. If I was to go that route, I like rapper rooters. I think um. Rockwell definitely has its place. Um, I think a lot of other people may prefer Rockwell, as the case may be. But I, as a rapper rooter, I, I find it like me being a soil guy. Like if that's what you're gonna use, they just seem like you could just plug that right into your soil and they disappear. You know. So. So. All right. Um, so if he's talking about for cloning, uh, right now I'm definitely using rapid rooters. Mm -hmm. um, I think for. Seed starts, if you're not going to start right in your container, uh, making the little soil blocks. I, I don't have a soil block maker. Have you seen those? You just make them yeah, out I've of compost. Mm -hmm. So you make your little soil blocks. I think those are completely ideal. It's um, actually an old gardener's trick, man. Yeah. Um, the soil blocks you're talking about. Mm -hmm. and um, For any guy that's, that's doing no-till and all that, you could definitely use that kind of soil. <clears throat> but make it real loomy if, for, if it's for your um, seedlings or whatever. But with those, like you said, like what you said with your um, soil cubes or whatever, just basically that's what you're doing, man. It's compressing the soil and creating right. a cube or whatever, man. and that works perfectly fine. It's, uh, you don't have to spend no money. Yeah, put a seed, <laughs> get, a, get a seed tray and get a put a seedling mix. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's that simple, man. Uh, you know, I, I I know a lot of um, people like to uh, pop their seedlings in um, paper towels in the water. Um, I, I definitely do the water myself, but and I also have done paper towel because it's a place for everything, you know, especially if you have old OCs. It's a reason to pop things the way you pop them or whatever. So, um, you know, I suggest for certain, uh, for, for certain, it's a place for everything. For uh, me, lately, what I've been doing is just dropping my seeds in the soil, man. And I, it, I swear to God, my, my germination rate has just been outstanding, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like without me even thinking about it. Really, like, if I'm planting 10 seeds, man, if I don't get 10 seeds, I'm not mad, but I know I'm getting eight out of them 10. And more than likely, I'm getting them 10s out of there if I'm dealing with some stable genetics. Um, you know, it's quiet as kept. But um, we, we we put a lot of emphasis, you know, and I don't blame people because we spend a lot of money on these genetics as well to make sure that we pop these seeds correctly and all that, you know, so... Like I said, I don't I don't knock anybody's method. Whatever works for you works for you, man. You know what I'm saying? That paper towel method's been going back since elementary, man. Popping beans and putting them in front of the windowsill. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's definitely a place for it. Um, <clears throat> I'm just rambling on, y'all. Forgive me. But uh, yeah, man, we talking organics or whatever. That's what I do. So no, tell I, me, any other questions? Let me know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect. This is just what I do. Big Worm does some of the same methods or yeah, whatever. I think soaking is important with the expensive seeds. I mean, it ain't nothing oh, yeah, wrong. Man. Soak it 12 hours. Give it that chance to bring well, that water pay, in. If you're going to pay $125, right, $75, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10 pack seed, of seeds, right. man, soak you, better, you better baby them jokers, man. So, like I said, I don't, I don't blame no one, but I just know as time go on, your attention probably won't be so geared to that anymore because you're so used to doing it. It becomes second nature. Now right. it's just... Pop them jokers in the soil, man. If you make it, you make it. If you didn't, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> it's just, it lets me know that I'm dealing with a strong, stable genetic from the start. That's all I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, certain ganja grows or certain cannabis grows in Jamaica have this method, right, where they might bunch up like 10 seeds in one, in one spot in that same grow spot, right? 10 seeds, just to see which one's going to make it out. In other words, eliminating the process from the beginning of picking your strongest genetic or your strongest plant. You know what I'm saying now? Right. I know it's not, it might not be logical for us to do that, especially what we're doing, you know, more craft and gardening and all that. But just imagine, you know what I'm saying? It makes sense if you think about it. Out of 10 seeds, only the strongest going to survive. I mean, it's only because these seeds cost so much, so yeah, we don't overplant yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, vegetable definitely. seeds, you overplant and thin. Your carrots, your beets, your radishes, everything you direct seeds, you overseed and then thin the biggest ones. You know, thin out the little ones. 
strong to survive. And we do that with everything. These seeds are just so darn expensive right now because we're not breeding them. You know, it's hard. It's hard to do that. You know, if with people people giving them out by the handfuls, it's different. You know, you can do that kind of thing. But and you still have that though. You still got that. Um, respect to the people out there, pheno hunting, creating their own genetics. I, I see a lot of a lot of genetics and names popping up. Some people might call them cheese suck, um, seed chuckers or whatever the case may be, pollen chuckers or whatever. Do what you do, but if you're not sure of what you're doing. Don't be afraid to have people test your product. In other words, testers and all that. Send testers out to grow. Don't be afraid that the people's going to say, oh, your shit is Hermian, or it's doing this and that. That's why it's called testers. That's why it's called people testing your strains to see what's going to happen before you actually put it out there in the market. So it's definitely a place for that. What I don't like is when you see a, a brand new no-name genetic pop-up, I got the best thing smoking. Give me two hundred dollars. I don't even know you. So, so all I'm saying is to say is, get your genetics tested. If you're pheno hunting, if you're creating genetics to sell out there on the market, the other people, because you don't want no man. If anything, you don't want no bad name on you, man. You don't want no bad bone. You don't want nobody talking trash about your 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 label. Whatever you work so hard for at the market, you understand what I'm saying? You don't want nobody messing that up. So try to put the best out there, man, and, and, and let people see your faults. So, you know, if you got your testers out there telling you that your strain is hurting me, hey, good. You caught it before you actually put it out there in the market. And now you can fix that problem. So, you know, talking about the pheno hunting, you know, Mountain Organics, we know we, we uh, posted a picture today of this um, Sunset Sherbert. So apparently it's showing more... Um, of the OG side, it's a, he said it's an uncommon female. Okay. So he said it's looking like the strong um, OG mom. So it should be a pretty close to original Kush. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. He said the coal is going to get fat as hell because I ended up with that one coal or whatever. And he's like, yeah, that looks like it's getting ready to fill out. And that's going to be just one big ass. So now it's like no pressure. Now you're going to try to baby that, that girl all the way to the end, huh? We'll see. Well, I mean... I'd like to see how just a real Kush smokes, you know, that, you know, cause that's reaching back, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we're talking about the genetics that's going back, you know, they can show exactly where they came from, from the seventies. And that's kind of yeah. cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I, I always go back. Like when you talking about Kush, I always go back to the story when I went out Cali and, um, went to the dispensary and we bought the strain called Kelly zombie, which is an OG of some sort. Don't ask me. I don't know. But God Damn it, man, that's been the strongest hitting thing that I done had yet so far, man. Whoever the cultivar that was, they did their thing. <clears throat> I mean, like, as far as, like, true OG and all that, and I don't, that's the only reason I bring that up. That's the closest I've been to it, you know what I'm saying, for sure. Well, I was just kind of excited when he said that because, you know, you've been with your land race, you know, you've been looking for a, you know, we were, when we were talking to T9, he was saying to cross it with a true OG or, you know, a true, right, right. you know, a true Kush or whatever. So I was like, well, might have a mom to do that with, you know, to mess around with, with those land race you got. So that was just, you know. And, and um, you know, and then the, the seeds that you're working with um, from Mountain Organics, <clears throat> everything was created organically with him. So you should definitely have, like, easy way going because the way he gardens and the way you garden is very similar. Right. You see what I'm saying? So whatever he got at his end, will be more than likely what you get on your end for the different pheno. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So you might have something in your hands, man, worth keeping. Like I said, you just got to baby her all the way through the end. Yeah, I'm going to have to re-veg it out. Um, my re-veg experiment did not work uh, with the oh, stomp. Oh, that little stomp. Yeah, I stomp saw that. Stomp didn't work. Stomp needed a little bit more leaf matter. Uh, the little buds didn't have enough on there. But that was a good experiment. I've never tried You know, I've never done that. So... Um, but I'll be darn also if that blue dream isn't taking forever to reveg, man. That plant is just hormones are crazy. I don't even know. I've never. It just doesn't look like it wants to stabilize. But yeah, man. What's going on out there, Chad? What's up, Underground Organics? Uh, and, um, <clears throat> like I said again, congratulations, J Rock. Uh, and please let me know if you got your email for your tickets. I know I'm gonna be there. Big Worm's gonna be there. National Cannabis Fest. Congratulations to you on that too. But um hopefully we get to meet you there at the event actually for the first time. Um 
And congratulations again. I'm glad that you won that anyways because you actually get to see how we do it out here. You get to come from, uh, I forgot if it was North Carolina or South Carolina. I don't want to get it wrong, but you get to come from out there and have some fun the D.C. way out here. You're going to get turned. You're going to get lit. Yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> good times. So I, I hope we get to meet you out there at the National Cannabis Fest. But um, <clears throat> I guess with all that being said, time's running on uh, long. I'm rambling. I want to get D.C. Scrog up here, man. And have him talk to us about, like his, like I said, his adventures, man, back and forth. From West Coast, East Coast, Mid nope. Coast, up and down. South, East, West. Well, yeah, your flying man. miles must be beautiful. Frequent fly miles. Right? <laughs> Check this out. Y'all need to download this app. I do not work for this company, but if y'all want to travel and travel for the low, skip lag. Skip and lag like lag time. Yo, I fly everywhere, mm. uh, but I have been traveling a lot here lately. Uh, I would say like out of the beginning of this year, it's probably probably been about a month and a half total traveling since the beginning of the year. Um, man, everywhere. I just got back from Ann Arbor Hash Bash, like literally this morning. I just drove back. Uh, man, Hash Bash, what can I say? Five star hash, and uh, that's what's there, man. Mm. Grumpy Farms. Uh, uh, Dax was up there. Dax Extract mm -hmm. was up there. Uh, um, Dab and Granny, Uncle Stoner. Man, man, how was? Yeah. Let me yeah. ask you, man. Is that her for real? Yeah, it's her. That's her for real, yeah, man. I her. swear to God, man. I got is one hundred. I have to put like that on my bucket lady. list, man. She I have like to one. put that on my bucket list to meet Dab and Granny she'll in be, person, uh, man. She'll be here. Uh, uh, phone homies bringing her and Chris Crazy out here. We actually talked about it there. She asked, "Was I going to be in DC?" Uh, fortunately, I won't be here for National Cannabis Festival. I'll be at High Times uh, 420 SoCal. Mm. Uh, and uh, if things go right, I'll also be at the Coachella. Um, but um, Ann Arbor Hash Bash was this past, this weekend that just passed. Uh, the second annual Ann Arbor Hash Bash Cup. Uh, it's the 47th year, I believe, the Ann Arbor Hash Bash has been going on. It's like two, three events in one. Uh, it's pretty dope. Uh, downtown uh, uh, at the campus, uh, there's a, 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 a protest and speakers. Maybe about three blocks away from the campus is uh, like a bazaar with the stage, stadia uh, uh, performances. And then at the Hash Bash at the Wyndham, it's the whole hotel. You get to smoke out the whole hotel all weekend. Uh, the Hash Bash Cup is held there. And uh, shout out to everybody out in Michigan, out in Detroit. Yo, they got that flame. They are big on the melts. They are big on the organics up there. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, are, definitely. They, they are, uh, I got some fire That's genetics. what I wanted to ask you. Like, what was the, what is the scene like out there to you? Like, how, how, what is the cannabis scene out there? Well, I was lit it, out there, boy. They came out, uh, what was it? I think it was the Saturday morning. I want to say it was Saturday morning. We, I got up. I went downstairs. Everybody was down. I had broke my neck the collector, so I didn't have, I couldn't hit my oil. Right. So I sat down with my homies, and then they just start bringing out rigs, man, motherships, Quave recyclers. I mean, like two, three hundred racks worth of glass sitting on the table, and uh, the culture is deep up there. I got up with the growers, you know. I, I'm we're growing. That's right, 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 right. I'm right. about the grows first and foremost. Without the grows, there is no fire. I, I, and I'm glad you said that. Like two, three, four racks. You ain't lying when you talking about them glasses, man. Cause look, I seen a a, a, a glass maker. I forgot his name. It was on IG. Now he made this ridiculous octopus. I mean, so detailed and everything, right? And that motherfucker, you smoke. It's a rig. Mm -hmm. It's a rig. I reached out to him. I asked him how much it was. Man, he told me a price. I I had to be honest with him. I said, you know what? I had to get back to you on that. But you have some beautiful artwork. Hey, man. Matt, some of these boys is walking around with fifteen, twenty thousand yeah, dollars hey. pendies. Are uh, just walking around on their neck. Uh, I seen them this weekend. Uh, um, the culture encompasses a lot, and. Uh, and the boys are deciding to spend their money on the culture itself. Exactly. And that's like the blessing. One would say, how much is something worth? Well, it's only worth as much as somebody's willing to pay for it. And when they, when you have dope art and you put the years in the craft, hey, it's a, it's a blessing, man. But Ann Arbor Hash Bash was super lit. Uh, 
I had came back from Kushstock the weekend before. I was uh, out Kushstock. I was judging at Ann Arbor Hash Bash. I was judging at the U.S. Squash Off at Kushstock. Uh, I'm at High Times judging uh, the U.S. Squash Off. The first time in High Times history that a competition within High Times' own competition will be going on. So shout out to Uncle Stoner, the Squash Off, Rosin Tech. Um, yeah, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about like six star hash. And uh, this is Rosin. Uh, this is uh, my homie, man. Bomber the Farmer, Grumpy Bear Farms, uh, Cannabis High Times Cup winner. And uh, that's my homie. I've been linked with him since they came that first uh, for the Cannabis uh, Summit 2015. And then. Uh, the boys that put on the show, I was leaving out. I, I just wanted to, I appreciate everybody. So I just went up to him and was like, yo, man, I appreciate y'all putting this on. You were super lit. I drove up from D.C. He was like, yo, D.C., word? Huh. He threw this to me, man. do si do Bruce Banner. Mm. Like, they they are growing and extracting there. But the growers I got up with, I got up with, uh, um, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like super fire. It is, um, man. I got up with Rip Genetics, man. Uh, Stank Breath is a, is, is a well-known cultivar out there in Michigan. And uh, seed packs, $100 a pack, a 10. Well, link with them. He gave me his whole genetic line for free. Like, he said, you follow me that Saturday. And he said, I've been following you. I know you'll grow it. I said, yeah, man, I'll grow it. I said, yo, I want that stank breath. I got that too and, and some sauce. And he gave me that. And what this is, is culture, me traveling all over. <laughs> One thing is um, when I leave the city, I am the city. Right, right. That's so I right also have that. to answer for the city also. So the stuff that's going on in the city, I'm asked and answered for, even though I may not be a part of. Um, but uh, it, people are genuine. The same way you guys are genuine since day one, loving the plant. Man, people that love the plant are like-minded and they connect. Uh, uh, I got up with uh, T-Dog, the artist. World-renowned T-Dog, the artist. He, he, he creates, oh man, he creates logos for people, but the logos like are stupid crazy. Like he, DC Farmer, he gonna come get to know you, mm -hmm. get to know who you are, and then do your logo, not like exactly. oh, I'm just send you some info and that. No, I want specifically I, to you, exactly yeah. to who you are. You yeah, know? yeah, definitely. And, and make something that is world renowned. And uh, I had a blast, man. I've had a blast traveling, man. I've been everywhere. I've been out to Cali. I've been to the Groves. I've been to Las Vegas to Champs to Glass uh, uh, Glass Games. Um, I'm gonna travel and continue to travel. Um, I continue to teach. And uh, go seek the best minds in this, man. And uh, organically growing. I seek the organic growers, those that are making uh, the six-star hash uh, and the six-star rosin hash. And, I, I, and uh, it's I, like... I definitely could attest to what you're saying because me coming up in this game, I, I always stay to myself. Like, literally stay to myself. But this business, man, people reach out to you. You reach out to people, man. And, and I, I believe it's because, like you said, everybody have the same love. Or, or the same feeling towards the plant, and it's it's been chastised so long that it's like, hey, I got this per this person I could reach out to exactly. that feels the same way I feel, and not have a saying? foreign conversation either. The exactly. conversations are so organic and so like you've known people for years because the common interest is the plant, and if you love the plant first, it'll work. Anything else is short change, and you know. Mm. I, I'm living proof mm -hmm. of someone in this city from the south side, D.C., uh, that uh, loves the plant and has a gift and a skill and is willing to share it. And when you're genuine, man, genuine people gravitate to you. And uh, it was told to me December 2015 by the Kings, this industry is made up of 100 friends and their friends. Yep. And if you're in with them... Because with, yeah, with me, it started, like I said, I, I used to like keeping it myself. With me, it started with just the plant. But from the plant, it grew to something else. It grew to a whole community of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, people you would I, people I would have never met, period. We wouldn't know each you other. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, We wouldn't know each other. Like, for me, it started out with, with just being about the plant. But 
about the plant came to be everything else. It's so much around the plant as well. You know what I'm saying? Like people with different type of talents and skill levels and man, like I'm telling you, man, it, it's just it's all love in the community, man. You definitely like I don't want to paint a pretty beautiful picture. You have some assholes out there. But it's not enough to actually fuck up the movement to what's really going on out nah, here. Nah, it's man. like they, you, you have people that yeah. you know for 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 a time in their life, and uh, this this city is as as always had fire. It's it's not like the fire just started coming around. Right, like, right, right. Like, used to come on the south side. Why some people are scared to come on there across that river? That was Still where you city, came uh, to come get the fire. Uh, but uh, what you have is like a chance now. And not feel persecuted or shamed yep. in in doing uh, what you love Nothing. or targeted, and uh, for us the growers, they ain't knocking on nobody's door. They ain't they ain't come knocking on no doors, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, I also think that um, we also have to keep <laughs> ourselves like like there's a difference between because we would be in the room at parties before all of this. And, you know, stuff would be going on and you would be smoking the fire, but you wouldn't know the person who grew the fire because they wouldn't open their mouth mm. one bit. Now we have the chance here in D.C. to legally express yeah. and turn the camera around I'm gonna and take share you back. our knowledge. I'm going to take you back, back. Look, my man T left the building. He might be outside or somewhere, but I'm going to take you back, back. Pop-ups have been happening out here for a long time. I mean, a long time. It just wasn't called pop-up. We used to have this club up here called... Uh, um, is it the nightclub? Uh, uh, fuck T.S. Yeah, he out there, man. Anyways, it was, it was a Jamaican joint. It's called a club. I was something like that. I forgot what it was called, man. He going to tell me what it was. But look, this was a Jamaican joint, right? You go up in there, the, the music already blasting, man. Uh -huh. The party atmosphere is real. Nah, nah. Hey, hey, T, what was the name of that club, you know, the Jamaican joint? Nah, yeah. man, when they sold the bud upstairs. Coffee House. Not the Coffee House, man. <laughs> There's enough spots, though. I remember anyways, Adams right, Morgan, 90s. You gonna remember what I'm telling the story. Look, so you come in the, in the club, you know, like a regular club, right? Come in the bottom, music, everybody dancing and everything, man. This is dance hall music, so the shit off the hook. Then you get to the back. There's some stairs. It might look like it's a VIP section, right? It damn sure was a VIP section. Two big ass dudes at the bottom talking about what you want. They talking about the weed, right? So you buy the weed, you go upstairs and enjoy and yourself. Enjoy yourself. Smoke and, it. It, and this was back in the late 90s, y'all. Yeah. yeah, I remember Adams Morgan, late 90s, man. All the, This is Adams Morgan. All the clubs were free. If you had to pay, you pay $5. It came with a free drink, right? Yo, no problem smoking. No problem smoking in any of them. Like, this is not something that's new. It's just new for some people. But for the culture of us that are growing, if you ain't exercising that right, I'm going to continue to call it out. I'll be rubbing people the wrong way. They be getting mm. mad at me. But I'm going to tell you straight to your face, you're a cotton picker. Cotton picking. <laughs> Consuming the product in which you can legally produce is cotton picking of the day. And the consumption is that. So when you can legally produce a product, you should be doing so. And you have people like Farmer here. You got Big Worm. You got myself. You got others around this city that's been doing this and been showing, giving factual information and knowledge, sound knowledge, so you don't have to go through the learning curve. I mean, I, and personally, you know, if, if you come from, say, not so so such a well-off society where you've been persecuted for this particular plant for so long, and now they're opening the door for you to do you, man, you better do it. Yeah. You better do you it, gotta, man. You, you got a little window, though. You got a little window to gain this knowledge and information, like, right now. And uh, yeah. I've, been, I've been on it since I, since I turned that camera around. I've been saying the same thing. And, yo, you got this little window to entrench yourself and really root yourself, meaning not to be uprooted, meaning well-rooted like your giant mothers. Man, if you're not rooted in this plant, you're going to get left behind. And if all you're doing is enjoying flavors and not understanding what those flavors are doing to you and why you actually enjoy them. Meaning what terpenes and how they affect you. Like this is like science and this is where it is. It's big business. You guys were up here talking about genes and, 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 and uh, 
homemade genetic pools and stuff like that. But where we're at with this this plant is genetic mapping. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing right now. Genetically mapping so that you can't say that you got tangy. Oh, you can say it. And as but soon you're gonna as have you to say pay it, boy, they're they going to tax you. are going to write that you, check like, like royalties of record yep. companies. Yep. Intellectual property. And I believe that people should have their intellectual property protected, especially when you took years to create it. You're talking 60000 for one. And, you know, one. I, I would say take notes, man. Yeah, even take, like you said, learn. It's a small window. So if you don't know where to go, take notes from, from the, the vegetable and the fruit, the tree grows. That that grow hurlum, you know, hurlum seeds from the beginning, cause these are genetics they kept to themselves. Right. And 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 when you're genuine, those land race genetics just somehow appear for you. Yeah. <laughs> I can just say that for yeah. myself, man. Yeah. Look, Real I got low. that fire. And especially going. if you know where to look too, right? Yeah, man. To some people, <laughs> like to a lot of us, it seems like it's real hard to get to, to these strains. But if you know where to look and who to ask... Oh, man, it's man, like... They, they it's be asking me all them, the time, man. like, where do you get seeds from? They be asking me, like, look, we cannot sell seeds in the city. There is no seed bank. Believe me, if there was a seed bank, I would have opened it up by now. Oh, but let's believe. And all the homies would have gave me their seeds man, to when sell. I got, when I got the Nigerian joints, man, for my folks, <laughs> like, that's what you want? What? <laughs> it's nothing. Like... That's what you asking for? Right. I'm like, yeah. Uh, I tell you, man, Rip Genetics gave me all of his whole line because I'm a grower. And because he wanted his Michigan genetics, where people would pay for them, pay pretty penny for his genetics, um, he said they'll be somewhere else in the country. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to grow that, that stank breath. And uh, he's got the OG Bobby Johnson crosses. So, uh yeah, I'm. 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 <laughs> he's got like uh, purple. Uh, uh, Bobby. Uh, Bobby. Purple Johnson. Purple Kush cross with OG Bobby Johnson. He got like crazy crosses. So I'm excited about that. But what I got going right now is that super flavors. Yeah, that man. blood orange boy, that Crockett blood orange. No, so you have the Crockett. You're gonna, you're gonna have a, a lot on your hands, man. Uh, that that you know, plus the Crockett. You know, yo, man, it's <laughs> it's 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 uh, you know. I, it's a lot, but it's like clockwork, man. I mean, it's like I can do this stuff mm -hmm. in my sleep. And when you're organic grower, it's like, okay, uh, did you water? Oh, it's time for micro brew tea. Speaking of organics, I got that grow class this weekend, man. Super soul. BYOB, um, man. Yeah, bring your own bring bucket. Bring your own bucket, Super Soul Mixing Party, man. That joint is this Saturday. Yo, man, we're going to mix up a hot and a cold mix. So you're going to have a cold mix for your seedlings. I like that you said that. Yeah, you got a cold mix for your seedlings and your early mm -hmm. veggie. And then you got a hot mix for your flour. And then we also going to be making up tea bags. So, yeah, we're going to make up tea bags. I got some Merlot bags. We're going to cut them up. We're going to make up them tea bags so you can have your uh, cold tea and a hot tea. So you can have both tea bags just in case. Sometimes you run these uh, veggies a little longer and, and you need to stimulate them up uh, before the flip. And, uh, man, yeah, that's yeah. what we're going to be doing, man. I mean, so, and yeah. definitely, and you don't, and for anybody that likes doing organic or curious about doing organic, Please come. You don't want to miss it. The best education is hands-on education. It's a hands-on class. A lot bro. of people say that organics is hard. It's not once you actually see it in action. Come learn how to save money, mix your soil. Yeah. Right, right. And then, like I said, I'm going to tell you what I put in the soil. I'm going to tell you how much the soil costs to make. I'm going to tell you everything there is to know. What I believe is like giving you all the information. No slave-master relationships. Giving you everything you need to know so you can make the decision. And one thing that I do know, you know, knowledge is free if you listen, right? Only 5% of people apply knowledge gain worldwide. Doesn't matter what I tell you, if it, you believe me or not, because only very few actually apply it. But on these classes that I give, it's all hands on, man. We're going to get dirty. We're going to make soil. Uh, and you're going to see uh, what you need to do. We're talking about water. Mm -hmm. And micro brew teas with molasses. That's it. Like, and all. And with these guys, with the no-till, it's like, even like, simpler than that. Mm. Like, 
once you understand the plant, though, and we have to get back to that, you have to understand what deficiencies are, what they look like, and in organic, how to supplement them. Uh, when you're pouring bottles on your plants, you're hoping that the that the plant uptakes all of the nutrients, where in soil and no-till, the plant feeds as it needs. Well, see, I, I, and in knowing that, right, see, I done caught on to the trick of the market, right? You heard what you just said, right? So when you're feeding the bottles, and I, like, I ain't knocking on you bottle dudes, but you're spending your money, and I'm going to tell you how. <laughs> when you're watering your plant with these bottles, man, they only could take what they can before the runoff runs out to the bottom of the soil. That's why you're feeding your plants so much. That's why you're running out of nutrients all the time, running right back to the store to reload. I'm telling you, man, it's a gimmick. It's definitely a gimmick. All that they try and do is recreate what's in nature. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And I tell you, bottle guys, I mean, I know. Look, I got clients that grow all different styles. Water, bottles. Like, it doesn't matter to me. You want to grow, I'll show you how to grow. I'll grow in any, anything that you want to grow in. It's, it doesn't matter. But what I prefer and what I would like to teach and I like everybody to, like, experience is organically grown flower as if you grew it outside in nature and knowing that these are the supplements and the minerals that are added into the soil, and this is why. And, uh, and in what stages the plant needs those to be uptake. So, yeah, man. You know, Come out nothing, to that, man. And there's absolutely nothing wrong uh, with a good super soil system. Yeah, you know, that, and you're going to produce quality flour with it. You know, and if you don't want to tackle the no-till, if you just want something, you know. Right, and you'd never have you to throw the soil on. away. Yeah, that's, another, that's, that's, just, that's, that's another thing. Right. Right. Yeah, another and thing you don't the end of your run, you ain't got to start <laughs> all over. You got to start right. all over. You beat the yo, yo, go over to your compost pile, go beat the, beat them roots, beat everything out of them, and you'll be good to go, man. Throw the roots into that in the compost pile, but in your dirt pile right there, keep it there. And then you'll supplement that, you know, and then you're good to go. Like, if, man, it's like so simple. Like sometimes people make it a, a lot difficult, man. But I appreciate y'all letting me come up here, man. No, definitely. Appreciate man. you sharing it, my travels with y'all. Um, definitely, man. Y'all come out, uh, support these guys, man. They've been out here and they've given you factual information and knowledge about this plant and about what's going on for us growers here in DC. And uh, the growing culture and the growing is where it starts. And that is Initiative 71. And I want to give you all something as I leave. Because I talked to the architect of Initiative 71, and he hit me to something that I had thought about, but I didn't, I wasn't going to put it out there. But I will. We can grow and in our home, home cultivation, right? So if I wash in my home, and I press in my home what I grew. <clears throat> what I'm told is that it's challengeable if they ever came after you or anybody else. If you're washing solventless and you have a press. I was told that. What, manufacturing or something else well, like that? Well, we can, we can cultivate a home cultivation and the man himself, Alan, who wrote it, like, there's a few things in that law that is written, and it's written very vague. It ain't about no pop-ups either. It's about the grows. <laughs> Six mature. It's the definition of mature. It's not given. All right? So what stages of plant grow for your plants, and when do you call them mature? At harvest? Like, Okay, that's one of the vague ones. But the other vague one is about the washing, about the processing. And he said it's challengeable. I want to give y'all facts and information that you can use, but I'm not telling you to go out there and go get anything other than organic, solventless, fire. Definitely, so. definitely with the, uh, the washing. You know, it's a nectar extraction. You mean you're you're not even doing a process. You're literally it's sifting. You're just literally sifting, putting something through a sifter. No different than you are baking with flour. What up with you? So I, you know, I completely agree with 100 percent on that, especially with your medical card, because you're allowed to have concentrates. You know, so 
Absolutely. Yeah, get yeah. your medical card. Yeah, yeah. Go get your medical card and, and, and know your laws and know what you can do. Come out this Saturday. And uh, for all of y'all that is out on the West Coast watching, high times, come check me. If you got some fire, bring it to the squash off. We're pressing with the press presses in the world. Rosin Tech. And for y'all... Uh, we got to wrap this up, but for y'all that's not following Squawker yet, follow him, man. Look, like I tell you, this dude will be traveling, man. I'm not playing. Look look mm -hmm. at his IG feed and see where he was just at the other day, and look where he at right now. And then by before the end of this week, he going to be somewhere else. I'm already And know, I grow, so. too. So all the while, y'all <laughs> giving excuses that you so, cannot grow. And uh, I travel. I travel the country. I will go anywhere where this plant is talked about and needed. Speaking of, there's a big conference in Pittsburgh this week, 12th through the 14th in Pittsburgh. Cannabis culture. Uh, 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 damn, I can't think of the name, but it's a big. Look it up on in, uh, on Eventbrite. Look my super soul up on Eventbrite, too. But look that up, man. If y'all want knowledge, y'all up in Pittsburgh area, go to that. And there'll be some of the best minds in there. And everybody is approachable. Know that. Definitely. Um, again, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, appreciate you coming in, Scrogger. Yeah, I appreciate you Definitely always, appreciate man. you coming in. Always, man. I appreciate um, y'all. Always the support all over my feeds. And, uh, yeah, man, I appreciate it. I definitely, really do, definitely. man. Support um, your own around here, man. Support yep. your local growers, yep. too. And with that being said, shout out to Infuse. I hope your family's fine and doing well. Um, good night, y'all. Thanks All for right, tuning in. Cannabis I DC. want to grow my own shit. Is that DC Fama? That DC Fama? That DC Fama? Is that DC Fama? That DC Fama? That DC Fama? Used to get my peace from AZ. Mary Jane is the case that they gave me. Trips from the West Coast stop real fast. DC Farmer showed the masses how to grow grass. No till the method be attentive.